He thinks otherwise. What does he know? I don't believe. Uh, I don't believe that some of these states uh, that they've called, like Florida, we just, I just don't believe that. I don't believe we've got enough evidence to be able to call the state. We're doing better than we thought, and um, but I feel. I feel fine. But America didn't feel fine. The machine ballot count was a shambles. So county officials began a laborious recount by hand. I think they should just re-elect, start it all over again. Cancel the whole deal that's went on now, and let's vote again. But with Bush's vote margin evaporating, Governor Jeb's officials halt the recount, saving the election for Bush. Then a tipster told me to check out some funny business. Thousands of black voters were turned away from the voting booths because they were labeled as convicted criminals. But were they? I met with Willie Steen, who like over 90,000 others was tagged a criminal not allowed to vote because Jeb Bush's officials said he was a felon. So Willie, fess up. Are you a criminal? No. No criminal at all. Never been convicted of any crime. But they had you down as a felon, a serious convicted criminal. Yes, they did, but not me. Wrong person. I've never been arrested in my life, you know. Was in the military for four years. Got out of the military, been in the medical field ever since. I mean, you can't even work for a hospital being a convicted felon. If you, in error, remove even one person from the voter rolls, it's of tremendous significance. We found errors. We were very uncomfortable with the matches on the list. The matches uh, that the state considered a match was not something that we necessarily considered a match. Sometimes the race and even the gender was not a match. Um, we were not comfortable. How did you feel internally when they said you're a criminal? Well, for one, I was upset. You know, um, I was ashamed. You know, what 40 people around and it made me feel real bad. You feel that they were, that it was particularly bad for African Americans? I, I really feel that it was bad, you know, for, for African Americans, but hey, you know, what can we do sometime? You know, what can we do? Using some legal snooping techniques, I was able to get into Florida's computers and cracked open the files that named Willie Steen and other black voters as potential criminals. Thomas Alvin Cooper is convicted in Ohio. He's a white guy. Thomas Cooper of Florida loses his vote. He's a black guy, and he's listed for a date of conviction of his felony, January 30th, 2007. Well, look at that. All it is is a people who have names similar to someone who's been convicted somewhere in the United States of a crime. 95% of them are completely innocent, should never have lost their vote. Over half of them are black. Almost every black person voted for Al Gore. The Citadel of Florida Democracy. Way up there, the office of Governor Jeb Bush and his elections director. This is it. This is where the little caper was carried out the theft of the American presidency. All those innocent black voters, thousands who lost their vote. Was it just a coincidence? I would have bought that until a little birdie dropped this on my desk. And it would prove to me that the election was signed, sealed, and delivered months before anyone entered a voting booth. This document Mark's secret is the contract between the state of Florida and DBT Choice Point, 
the company was paid millions to compile lists of criminals who should be barred from voting and then verify that those lists were correct. But Florida state officials told Choice Point not to bother verifying the lists, despite Choice Point warnings that it could mean thousands of innocent people would end up losing their vote. The documents I've discovered implicate Jeb Bush's Secretary of State, Catherine Harris, and this man, Clayton Roberts, director of the Department of Elections. Roberts agreed to be interviewed, but was uncomfortable when I produced the $4 million contract. We have a statute that says we have to have a private company do this. We put it out for bid. They got the bid. And I think I'm done with this interview. Wait, well, let me just, ask, let me just show you the contract, if I could, Mr. Roberts. Wait. It says here, right in the contract, that the verification is supposed to be done by DBT, that you paid them $4 million. Don't you, is, it could look to other people, don't you think that you paid $4 million to purchase this election for the Republican Party? 95% wrong on the felon list? Mr. Roberts, could you just please answer the question regarding the contract? In accordance with the laws of the state of Florida, I hereby declare Governor George W. Bush the winner of Florida's 25 electoral votes for the President of the United States. Catherine Harris was Clayton Roberts' boss, and her boss was Jeb Bush. But she also happened to be chairwoman of the Bush for President campaign and successfully delivered W a victory by just 537 votes. Now that the votes are counted, it is time for the votes to count. I wish to point out that our American democracy has triumphed once again. It is a special day for America. It's a day in which our nation confirms the fact that we trust democracy, a peaceful transfer of power. Thank you, and may God bless America. To the corporations that put him into the White House, George W. Bush was an investment that paid off big time. Take that company that came up with the phony felon list, Choice Point. They got it 95% wrong, but they didn't get the boot. They got the big, no-bid contracts, including one for $67 million to help Bush fight his war on terror. And they weren't the only company involved in Bush's election to hit the White House jackpot. George W. Bush, uh, as governor and now as president, is an absolute corporate wet dream. Jim Hightower, once the Commissioner of Agriculture for the state of Texas, is now a radio columnist. From inside government and out, he's tracked the Bush family's mix of politics and payouts for years. I'd trust a wolf to guard my last pork chop before I'd trust the Bushites to guard my liberties. Any fantasy that the boss of a major corporation has can come true uh, if you just put in uh, some money uh, into Bush's personal or political pockets. Looks powerful. Looks invincible. In fact, it's the gravestone here in Houston of what was the largest power corporation on this planet, Enron. Here's something that caught my eye. Bush takes office. Just three days later, he signs an executive order that raises the price of electricity in California. Nearly bankrupts that state, but earns these guys billions. Now, why would our president do that? They're very loyal to each other and to those who are loyal to them. They stand and deliver for those who 
put money into their politics or into their personal accounts. I, George Walker Bush, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Enron puts in a few hundred thousand dollars into Bush's presidential campaign. In the first five or six months of the administration, it reaps hundreds of millions of dollars uh, in personal benefit. Here's Ken Lay, who's the CEO of Enron. He delivered hundreds of thousands of dollars to the Bush campaign. Craig McDonald heads Texans for Public Justice. This is the power team. They hit the long ball, and they can put you all the way in the White House. The payback process is policy. It's appointments and policy. Ken Lay, Enron, the oil cronies got exactly what they wanted out of the Bush administration. Even before he takes the presidential oath, Bush forms a secret task force, including Enron's Ken Lay, to rewrite America's environmental and energy laws. He put the very people who funded him in the room to devise a clean air policy. They wrote the policy, he enacted the policy, and the policy was strictly violent.